Praise the Lord, everybody. So I want to talk about this. This topic was on my heart. So I feel that anyone who, uh, you know, logs into this live, this word was just meant to uh, encourage you today and, you know, just keep you from just being depressed, being discouraged. Uh, maybe you just needed some encouragement. So this word is for you if you log into this live. All right. Everybody knows that, you know, Ecclesiastics talks about there being a time for everything. And the Bible says that it rains on the just and the unjust. The first thing I need you to understand is there's seasons for everything, all right? There's going to be some seasons where it's just like, man, I'm walking in the favor and blessings of God and everything is going right. And then there's going to be other seasons where you just feel like, man, all hell is breaking loose in my life. I'm going through tests. I'm going through trials. I'm going through storms back to back to back. Everything that can possibly go wrong seems to be going wrong in my life. There's going to be seasons where, you know, uh, even with Jesus, he had his miracle season where he was doing signs, he was doing wonders, he was doing miracles, he was feeding the 5,000, and people loved him, people flocked to him, people were following him. But then when it came time for Jesus to come to the cross and go to the cross, not even all of his disciples were there with him, not even all of his disciples followed him to the cross, even Peter denied that he even knew Jesus. So you need to understand that there are going to be seasons in your life, your miracle season. Everybody loves you. Everybody wants to say they know you. Everybody's so proud of you, but then life happens. All right. And when you go through your misery season, some people are not going to stick around. When Jesus was just giving to people and blessing people and healing people, they said, man, we, we're going to follow this man. And, and, and thousands followed him. But when it was time for Jesus to go to the cross, how many people were actually standing at the cross with him? Now, what I want you to understand, my brothers and sisters, something that God showed me when I went to South Korea, it's one of the lessons that changed my life. If you listen to this, it's going to change your perspective. It literally changed my life. All right. I went through a year right before I went to South Korea where I was connected. I had brothers in Christ. And even though I had a lot of tests and trials going on in my life, I had people that I could call. I had people that I could vent to. I had people that I can, you know, lean on. And then the Lord, just in an instant, you know, I got orders to go to South Korea and all hell started breaking loose in my life. And I was all by myself. I didn't have a church that I could go to. I had to have church by myself. I couldn't just get on the phone and call people because obviously I'm on, you know, the other side of the world. And what the Lord showed me, he gave me this message, the island of isolation. Now, one or two things is going to happen when you get on the island of isolation. You can sit there and you can get discouraged. You can sit there and get depressed. You can sit there and wait till you die. Or you can come to the revelation that I came to that he said, I allowed you to be on this island because I wanted you all to myself. All right. I, 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 put you to the side and I allowed certain people not to pick up the phone. I allowed certain individuals not to be there for you because you came, you became too dependent on them. You became too dependent on that relationship. You became too dependent on that job. You became too dependent on that pastor to the point where you almost made those things an idol. Instead of having a prayer life and actually talking to me, you went and you just vented to everybody else. And I was an afterthought. So I had to take you from being surrounded by all those people and put you on the island of isolation. And I want to change your perspective so you realize this is a place to get intimate with me. This is a place to really get to know me. This is a place to remind yourself that the source of my resource is God, not my job, not my wife, not my husband, not my kids, nothing. So the Lord will allow you to be in a position where it feels like, man, I'm, I'm by myself. I'm not getting no support because he wants you to change your focus from here here and here to straight up here, looking vertical. And oftentimes the only way he can get us to look up is to go through these problems, these trials, and these isolated periods of our life. Now, I know that might not be what some of you want to hear. Some of you are saying, man, I've been on the island of isolation for a long time. And I'm waiting for God to rescue me. I've been single for a long time. I've been without the job I wanted for a long time. I've been struggling with this for a long time. But but maybe you got to humble yourself and, and say, well, Lord, is there anything else that you're trying to work on me while I'm on this island of isolation? Before you bring me from the wilderness to the promised land, is there anything that I need to change about my mentality? Is there anything that I need to change about the way that I deal with people? And I always tell people, once you learn the lesson, then you can get the blessing. As soon as you learn what God is trying to show you, 
and you stop worrying about everybody else, all right? So you're sitting on your island and, and you're just sitting there thinking, man, you know, if this person would just do this and if I just had this and if my dad had did this and if my mama had did this and so you're sitting there bitter on the island, if my husband had did this, if my wife had did this, right? If I have this kind of money and the Lord is saying, look, I'm the source of your resource and you're not gonna leave this island, all right, till you get that understanding because where I'm going to take you, where I'm going to promote you, the things that I want want to show you, I need you to have a foundation where you trust me first. So if I allow you to move into that next season of your life, if I take you off of this island before you're ready, you're going to mess it up. If I take you into the promised land with the wrong people, they're going to destroy it. So I put you on the island of isolation because I wanted you to realize that when I promote you, you can't be dependent on your pastor. You can't be dependent on your spouse. You can't be dependent on your children. You can't be dependent on your job because these things will fail you or let you down at some point in time. I needed you to go to the promised land knowing that I depend on God. I don't put my trust in man. I don't put my trust in job. I don't put my security in these worldly things or this worldly economy. My trust is completely in God. And that is why God will isolate you sometimes and allow some people to reject you. And you can apply this to any area of your life that you can think of. If you're always, uh, you know, just depending on your spouse to be happy, God, you can pray for your spouse till you're blue in the face. And it's not that they're a bad person, but God will continue to allow your spouse to act up. And you're praying, Lord, fix them, fix them. And he says, no, I'm using them to fix what's in you. I don't want your happiness to be dependent on how your spouse treats you. Because when I take you to the promised land, if your spouse is acting up, you're not going to worship me. If your spouse is acting up, you're not going to fight for the land. If your spouse is acting up, you're going to be distracted and the enemy is going to come in and destroy the land. Do you see where I'm going with this? So God will allow you to be isolated so that when he promotes you, it's not that you're just your head is just in the clouds and I don't need anybody else, but I know what I have with God. So when people talk about me, you can't discourage me. You can't hinder me. You can't get me to stop building my ark. You can't get me to stop fighting for the promised land because if everybody leaves me, all I need is God. If I don't have no money in the bank, all I need is God. If I don't have someone laying in the bed next to me every night, all I need is God. If my children are acting up, all I need is God. If you're not supporting me, all I need is God. If you don't say nice things about me, all I need is God. If my father walked out on me, all I need is God. If my mother wasn't affectionate, all I need is God. If the church rejects me, all I need is God. And so you see that with Joseph. God gave Joseph a vision, allowed him to be thrown in the pit. And all Joseph needed was what? His faith in God. He didn't need his brother's approval. He didn't even need his father in his life. All he needed to know was that in every area and situation and season of his life, he kept his discipline. He kept his faith in God. And God was the one that promoted him. God took him from the pit to the prison to the palace. And we have to trust the process. Your pit in your prison might not look like mine, but I guarantee you what God is trying to see is your reaction to the pit, your reaction uh, to the prison, your reaction to the betrayal, your reaction to the people that let you down. This is true faith. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. Everybody says they have faith, right? Everybody says amen when the preacher preaches about faith. Everybody sings, oh God, I trust you. Oh God, I love you. But when you actually face the opposition, or is your attitude a response of faith? When you're actually in the pit and you know that you don't deserve to be in the pit, you know that you don't deserve to be rejected, you know that you didn't deserve to get your heart broken, you know that you don't deserve the things that are happening to you, it's not fair, but what is your attitude saying about what you believe? Are you sitting there down and out, depressed and discouraged, not worshiping in God, not uh, praising God, not seeking God anymore because of what somebody did to you, how somebody let you down, what they said about you, or is your posture still that of God, I trust you, so because I really do have faith, I can be faithful. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because I have faith, I can be faithful when you break my heart. Because I have faith, I can be faithful when you walk out of my life. Because I have faith, I can be faithful when things don't go my way. Because I have faith, I can be faithful whether I'm married or I'm single, whether I'm divorced or I'm happy or I'm sad or I'm bitter or I'm broken or I'm rejected. I can be faithful because I have faith. And because I can be faithful because I have faith, God can take me into the promised land because he knows I will be faithful over what he gives me. 
See, God wants us to be good stewards. So he'll take you the route of the island of isolation to see how you respond and say, look, you were faithful on the island. You were faithful when you were alone. You, you, you didn't follow your feelings. You followed your faith. Your feelings told you to quit. Your feelings told you to give up. Your feelings told you to have a pity party. Your feelings told you to get revenge. Your feelings said to treat them the way that they treated you. Your feelings said, you know what? They cheated on you. Go cheat on them. Your feelings told you they said something mean about you. Say something mean about them, but your faith, because faith cometh by the word of God, told you, hey, go ahead and forgive them. Go ahead and bless those that persecute you. Go ahead and be kind. Go ahead and show the fruits of the spirit. And when God saw the fruit in your life, he said, you're ready. Now I can take you from the island because I saw the fruit. But like the fig tree, when Jesus came up to the fig tree and there was no fruit, he cursed it. That is what God is looking for. That is what it is all about, my brothers and sisters. And if you get this revelation, you get this key of what I'm saying, it's going to change the way you live life. It's going to change the way you respond to everything. And that is when you'll see the blessings and favor of God open on your life. Because the key to that is what? Faith. Faith is like an aroma that you send up that catches the nostrils of God and it gets his attention. It's like when your mother and your grandmother is cooking in the morning and, and you say, man, what's that smell? It smells good. And you run downstairs. That's what your faith does. Faith in the valley, faith in the pit, faith in the face of Goliath, faith in the face of people who reject you and do you wrong. Oh, you don't think that I can overcome? Yes, I can. You want to hold my past against me? But the Lord has told me in his word that he's forgiven me. He's removed my sins as far as the east is from the west. So I'm going to choose to believe the report of the Lord. I'm going to choose to believe what the word of God says, as opposed to what you're saying about my destiny, about my calling, about what God has called me to do. I refuse to believe what you're saying about my marriage. I refuse to believe what you're saying about my children. I refuse to believe what you're saying about my job and my circumstances and the different tests and trials that I'm going through. I choose to believe what the word of God says, even if nobody's cheering me on, even if I can't call nobody and vent about it, even if I'm all alone and I have to believe by myself, if I have to worship by myself, if I have to fight by myself. See, that is what God loves. That's why people get a blessing that doesn't make sense. You don't understand my praise. You don't understand my worship. You don't understand why I'm blessed. But you didn't see my private battles. You judge the crown, but you didn't see the cross. You say I'm arrogant when I step out to fight Goliath, but you didn't see me fight the lion and the bear privately. And this is what God is looking for. What you do secretly, he will reward you publicly. And some people, they don't get it. They don't understand the private battles that you had to fight is the reason why God is blessing you now. This is why you're 2019 because of what you had to fight privately in 2018. God is going to bless you now. But the Bible says that all things work together for the what? The good of them that love him and are called according to his purpose. And at the lowest denominator, the basic level, what is your purpose, my brother and sister? It's to bring glory to God. Well, how do I bring glory to God? I bring glory to God by responding in faith to every situation that I face because I say, you know what? No matter what I'm facing, my God is bigger. My God is greater. My God is stronger. My God is more powerful. He holds the victory in his hand. And I declare that with my life. I declare that with my attitude. I declare that with my reaction. I declare that with my words. I declare that with the things that I do. So I am in fact worshiping in spirit and in truth, as I always say, the churches are good at worshiping in spirit, but not as good as is worshiping in truth in the word of God. So I take a stand for God through my actions, through my attitude, through my response of everything that I'm facing. And this is why God puts you in certain predicaments and situations. And the children of Israel, they couldn't go into the promised land. They went around and around and around in the wilderness because they didn't learn the lesson. Right. Some of you go around and around and around in the wilderness, wondering when your blessing is coming, wondering when your spouse is coming, wonder when this favor is coming that you see other believers walking in. And God is wondering, when is your obedience coming? When is your faith coming? When are you going to stop leaning to your own understanding and doing things your way? When are you going to start responding like Christ to every single individual in your life? Not just the people that you like, not just the people that support you. When are you going to be a reflection of me to this world? World, to your enemies, to your friends, to your family, to your co-workers. That's what he's looking for. Do you look like me when you're in the pit? 
Do you look like I gave you my spirit, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead? Do you look like me in the face of your enemy? Do you look like me in the face of your Judas? Do you look like me when you're going through it? Do you look like me when I said, peace be still to the storm? Do you look like me in the storm? Do you look like me in the valley? Do you look like me on the cross? Do you look at me when dealing with Pharisees? Do you look like me when dealing with religious people? That is that is the whole point of why we are here. We bring glory to God by being Christ-like in every situation. And it takes faith to do that. And in order to have faith, you need to be equipped with the word of God because faith cometh by what? hearing the word of God. That's why the Bible says my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. The reason you're not blessed is a lack of knowledge. The reason you don't have fire is a lack of knowledge. The reason why you're getting destroyed is a lack of knowledge. The reason why you're getting your behind kick is a lack, a lack of knowledge. Get up in the word of God. Let the word of God meet the spirit of God. And that sends up some power. Man, I put, I said a lot in this video. I'm going to just stop it. I don't want it to be much longer. This is the kind of video you guys got to share. This is the kind of video you need to get in your mentality and it will change your whole life. And you will see that it activates blessings in your life. It activates victory in your life and it changes the way you look at everything. God bless you. Be encouraged. Have a wonderful day in Jesus name.